Hi there, so today I'm going to show you how to create your first co-pilot within Microsoft Copilot Studio. Now this was announced at Ignite and is now in preview and it essentially replaces the Power Platform Agent service, right? So the uh, the Power Agent facility you can build, uh, very much built on the same technology, but of course with um, generative AI. So in order to start off, um, we simply need to go to the URL copilotstudio.microsoft.com. Um, if you've never opened this before, it will ask you to sign up for a trial. If you don't have a license, you can get a 90 day trial. After that point, um, at the moment you can extend it, but there's a number of um, areas in here in preview, as you can see on the left hand pane. And there are lots of things that are uh, paid services, or premium services that, that you need to do. So I'm going to create a very simple generative AI powered chatbot today um, using some website data. So you'll see here I have no co-pilots at the moment. So this is the page that you will see when you start out. So to create a new, uh, new co-pilot, um, it's very much wizard driven. So I can click here on new co-pilot. It will ask me for a name. Um, so I'm going to call it a blog bot. Um, you'll see why in a moment what I can then do is uh, ask tell it what language that I want to speak so I'm going to stick to the default of, of English and then what I can do is point it to um, a website so this can be an internal website uh, obviously you'll want to have some authentication set up um, if you want to link it to internal resources such as your intranet or, or Viva uh, pages for example or I can connect to an external website as well so this is quite useful if you're connecting it to your um, your organizational website and you want to publish the chatbot to allow your customers or partners to uh, query content using um, generative AI and natural language. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to use my blog site. Uh, and let's stick the S in there as well. There we go. And I'm going to simply click on create. So I do have some advanced options. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click create for now. So that will now go away in the background and set up my copilot for me. Now it does take a few moments to do, depending on load and those kind of things. First time you run this, it, it seems to take a little bit longer. Um, so you know, three or four minutes. Uh, but as you can see, I've now created a chatbot essentially. If you're used to using Power Platform, this will look quite similar to you. And you'll see here again, I've got some you know, very easy places to go to. Straight away, you can see that I have the ability to test my bot out down here. So I can ask some really simple questions and things which we'll have a look at in a moment. Down the left-hand side, I've got some navigational controls. So I can um, add different things and customize my, my bot. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do um, to customize is, is go down to the generative AI section in here. Um, you can see here it's already set by default to use generative answers. So this is a real massive improvement over virtual agents traditionally where you'd need to add that content yourself. You'd need to create the flow of conversation that's going to happen. Of course, with this is kind of really boost that conversation by enabling it to use the Gen AI features to query the data that it finds on your website to answer questions. I can add additional sites if I want to as well. So I'm not limited to one individual site. If I had some content that I regularly reference or I had you know, a couple of different sites, then I could I could reference those as well. It does only work on uh, text content at the moment. So um, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to link this to my YouTube channel or, or, or things like that as well. But for now, I'm gonna keep that relatively simple. You can determine the content moderation. Now I tend to set this to medium. Um, this is all really about how accurate the responses are. So depending on what you are querying from a data source, you might want to ensure this data is more accurate, um, but maybe less responses, uh, or you might want to have a bit more balance. So medium is kind of balanced if, I, if I'm honest, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to that one. I may also have some dedicated documents I've created that are more in depth that, that I perhaps want to use. So I can upload documents as well to this. Uh, at the moment, these are only text-based files, so Word documents and PDFs and those kind of things. And that's that's pretty much all I need to do, really. Um, do need to remember just to anything you change here to click Save at the top. I haven't really altered anything other than the, the, the language side, so, so there we go. And then on the left-hand side now, in this kind of test, test co-pilot dialogue, I can now start to 
ask it some questions um, about the blog. So I can ask it, um, does this blog include any articles about Microsoft Teams? So I can ask a question in natural language. And again, it's it's come back and said, look, yeah, there are some articles that specifically talk about Teams on the blog. And it's given me some um, direct, direct link references to to these. Now, unlike using Copilot on the web or using Microsoft 365 Copilot, if you've got access to that, um, it, it doesn't necessarily extract all that information. It's really navigating you to, to content in, in a far easier way. So I could, of course, have gone to the blog site and searched for these things, but you'll see it has picked out a couple of articles. Now, I'm sure there's more than three articles about Teams on my on my blog site, but it has pulled these out. Um, and you'll see here I can go I can go and reference them. So I can now ask you know, another question. So I could say, um, does the blog. Discuss anything about Copilot Studio. Let's see what it comes back with. So again, yes, so it has found um, that I have talked about Copilot Studio. In fact, this is referencing a blog that I wrote um, just on Friday uh, about um, this demo that I'm actually doing now. So so, so quite useful stuff. Um, it, it doesn't get everything right. So if I ask it how many blog posts this contain, then, um, yeah, there's an example here of some things that it, it doesn't quite understand. Um, if I ask it who I am, remember this is just in the context of these pages I've given it, so this isn't accessing the wider internet. Uh, let's see if we can pull that information out of the blog. So there we go. So it has obviously read through the blog. Uh, it has pulled out some information about myself and it's presenting that information back again with some uh, with some links that I can that I can go to. So I can of course ask this um, anything that, that I want to do. Now, this is a, a blog site mainly around Microsoft 365 technology, but I do talk about some other things as well. So I can essentially just ask questions. So I've asked it about, I've asked it what Copilot is here, and it's it's brought out a summary of what that is, a form of information within the blog. So it's created a summary of those different things and given me links to those documents um, as I want to. I asked it a question further up about Teams Premium, so I asked it what Teams Premium was, and it's given me some responses around those things as well. Um, I could ask it a question about something different. So um, can you tell me what Cisco thousand it doesn't help me spell, unfortunately. It should be able to go back to the blog again, and it's found some information about Thousand Eyes that I've written about. So, so it's really quite comprehensive. I've got you know lots and lots of different uh, pages on here from um, from a, from a huge amount of time, um, and I can simply ask it information and take it. So this could be really useful. If this is an internal um, intranet site, for example. I can simply ask it questions, and, and it will navigate me without me having to search through search through content. Now, once I've done this, and this is very simple, as again, I can I can expand this uh, if I want to as well through um, what Microsoft called topics. So, so a topic is really um, a, a search entity, right? So these are things I'm asking. Now, what's happening with the majority of these is uh, is using generative AI to determine what the topic is that I'm asking and servicing content, but I can still direct um, people through that content, right? So, so for example, I could. Um, I could create a, a topic about tell me about something and I could give it some prompts and um, the the user could could fill out, you know, response one, two, three, four, and those kind of things. So all the things I could traditionally do within within a bot and, and, it, and it can kind of grab a tan. And that's essentially how a lot of the engines um, work. And I can I can create these and, and 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 trigger things, for example. So if I have a look at the greeting 
uh, by default, you'll see here there's um, it, it will load up the logic behind this, right? So these are all the phrases that trigger this, right? So if I say uh, good afternoon, good morning, hello, hey, whatever, um, then you'll kind of see the logic that that kind of flows through and what the message is that it that it displays um, and how all of this kind of navigates, right? So so it simply flows so you can have a look at these and add your own. I don't really feel I need to for the purpose of this. Um, I can also use Copilot to create them for me as well. So I can actually use Generative AI to describe a particular trigger that I want to add, and it will do that, right? So it, it will go through and ask me those things. So um, that's quite useful to know. Uh, I, of course, get analytics around how, it, how, it's, um, how it's used. I do get the option to extend this, and I do get the option to publish it. Now, when I publish something, what I'm doing here is just using it in kind of test mode, but You'll notice here when I click on publish that I get the option to publish this uh, chatbot um, to a number of different places, right? So um, by default, what will happen when I publish it is it will create like a demo website for me. So I can just go and query and see how the engine's gonna work. Um, theoretically, I could just use that as my as my chatbot, right? Really simple way of doing things, but traditionally I would probably embed that into my um, website. Now, what I can also do here is I can configure different channels that I want to, to configure this on. So I can have this as an app within, say, Microsoft Teams or even some external sources. So you'll see here it supports Slack, it supports Skype, Facebook, um, other entities. I can publish it as a, as a power virtual agent, obviously, as, you, as you'd imagine. Uh, and loads of other kind of things. So it's so it's really quite simple to see how I do that. Um, if I click on publish here, here we go. So it's kind of published the site. It's telling me it's good to go. It's creating me a demo website that I can take it into. Um, of course, if I want to do more than that, then I do need to to kind of go back over to here and tell it where. Um, where I'm going to publish those things to. So this is kind of all under the extensibility and, and those kind of things of where I'm actually going to publish it to. So they call it kind of channels. So you'll see here, these are the different channels that I potentially can publish to. So so by default, it, it kind of creates this demo site, which is what it's done for me. But I can activate it on my own website as well. So it gives me the embed code, which I can simply uh, place in. Uh, into the website as long as that's um, available to me. So I'll have a go at doing that. I can again do single sign-on code. So, so again, I you know if I if I require people to ask the question, I can publish this as well. So, but for now, I've literally just published this into the into the sample page that it's created for me. See here now, it's given me a URL, so I can take the URL, copy that to the clipboard, and I can open up a new tab. I can paste that in. And what we should see now is it creates this very simple um, demo website. It's used all the standard text. I've not customized it in any any kind of way at all. Um, you know, some of these functions aren't going to be available. So you know, talk to a person. I've not enabled that, so I haven't configured that. But you know, perhaps I could one day. But I can now just run this in the contents of the website. This will optimize for mobile as well. So great way of testing it. Um, so I can I can now ask it who is Rob Crickenden. And again, it will read the website for me. It will it will pull out some information, um, some summaries of the website and those kind of things. I can ask it again, uh, what is Teams Premium? And it should find that article in, in the website for me. So quite useful if I, you know, way to, to see how we can kind of extend this capability. Um, I think this is really powerful. Like I say, this could be indexing an entire site of sales collateral and those kind of things from, from within SharePoint. So, so there we go, very brief overview of Copilot Studio. I haven't dived into any of the kind of real extensibility features or any of the, the other kind of things, but just gives you the kind of concept of some of the things that you can think about. I think it's great for different parts of the business to have a look at this and have a little play around with it from a demo environment. Just starts to give you some of the potential of what, of what Copilot Studio um, can do. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you like the post, please um, like and subscribe, and um, and share with your friends. Thanks very much.